So um, C++ makes it difficult to blow your foot off, apparently. But when you do, um, and you will, then uh, you blow your entire leg off. Um, but what I've usually found is that when somebody does that, they usually blow your leg off. So um, today we're going to deal with uh, what happens when that happens. Uh, it's not as bad as it sounds, though. Um, what I'm going to do is I've made a copy of the last uh, tutorial we did where we made our new fancy object-oriented syntax, which is... Um, this syntax here for our sprite move draw uh, that was all really nice uh, but there was one thing we were missing and the thing we were missing uh, was and this is where the C++ part comes in uh, we have an X and a Y value here which are actually public because this is just a struct so um, this is not recommended practice in C++ uh, you shouldn't be exposing public member variables um, you should be encapsulating and making everything beautiful. Uh, but what actually really happens is usually somebody does this. And uh, the problem we've got is that it's possible, again, that you didn't write this this uh, native class that you're trying to map to Lua and you're trying to embed in Lua. So you need Lua to be able to access these variables um, as well as the methods and the constructor and the destructor like we've already got. Um, and there may be some valid use cases for like making these things public, but usually it's just broken encapsulation and we need to be able to handle that as well. So um, at the moment, the code we've got probably, well, definitely won't do that. So let me just clean up our script a little bit. I'll take out the comments from last time. Um, I'll take out this second sprite draw and that, that's just a duplicate call. So I'll just leave us with making that sprite, which is the C++ class we just saw and we're going to call our move function, call our draw function, and we're not going to try and access the things yet, but let's just see if that works. So there it is at the bottom, reading object properties. Um, we've we've printed, we've moved our sprite to 5 and 7, and then we've printed out the um, place where it was, or we've drawn it. That's our draw function. So what we'd really like to do is get access to that x and y value. Um, so I could do that by... Uh, really what I want to do is I want to just be able to do sprite.x because that's kind of how it would work in C++ so let's just do that and I'll just um, I'll just assign it to a global called tempx and um, then down here uh, after the program's finished or after the Lewis script's finished I will get that temp and I'll just print it out or I'll just assert um, that it is what we thought it was. Um, it's temp x, and it's a number, or it should be a number. Um, it's the last thing on the stack. And I'll just assert that um, temp x is um, 5, I think, is what it would be. Let's just have a look. Uh, yeah, so we, we start our sprite starts off at 0, 0, then it moves to 5 and 7. So the x value should be 5. We've just read it and put it into a global. Um, so we should just be able to assert at the end of the program, after the Lewis script's executed, that um that that worked correctly so let's have a go and we got our assert assertion failed so something has gone horribly wrong um but that's not surprising because we haven't really tried to make an access function for this x and this is where it starts to get a bit tricky because i i've tried this in the past and the usual way that i tempt this it always seems to go wrong so I'll probably just go through the way I've tried it before just so you can see that this just doesn't work um, and then we'll try and get the correct way of doing it or a correct way of doing it because Lou is so granular the, the the API is so almost low level there's probably many ways of solving this problem so I'm just going to solve it in the way that I have solved it before so uh, Let's see if we can do it. So we're going to try, we'll do the way that, that 
we think is going to go wrong. Well, I, I know it's going to go wrong first. Um, what we had before was we've got our sprite which has a meta table. It's a it's a user user datum has a meta table, and the meta table has the index meta method, which is also a table, which has our move and draw function in it. So. Um, really what we think we could do is maybe just push another function onto that table which is this sprite table here maybe we could just push another one on and we could just call it X and let's have let's call it sprite X um, and maybe we could just get it to access that function so let's give that a go so instead of um, instead of draw sprite let's let's make one called sprite X um, just takes the yeah well we think it's going to have the user, user data on the stack and we should be able to push X onto the stack and leave it for us let's see if that works push number oops didn't want to do that sprite X so we're making the assumption that the user the user datum of our sprite is going to be the thing that's on the stack and we're going to push the number that is in currently in x onto the stack and we're going to tell it we left that number for lua to pick up so um let's just see if we can get that to work it should compile nope doesn't work so what went wrong there so one of the things that maybe's happened is um Sprite, it thinks Sprite is actually, it'll be the user user data, or it'll be the Sprite user datum. It should, um, we're, we're looking for the X on it, but it'll say there's no X, so it'll go straight to the index, um, and which will go straight to the table, which should go straight to that, but it, it just doesn't do it. Um, now maybe it's because, maybe it is being called, but maybe it needs this syntax because we need to pass the user datum around so so this should be um, syntactic sugar for this um, but if I wanted to do that I'd have to call this as a function so maybe that'll work maybe that'll get me my x value but um, let's just see um, one second. Ah, so that's worked. So it is kind of doing what we want. We're getting our x value, but again, we've we've ended up the same problem we had at the, the first time. Is that it looks like x is now a function, and we have to call it with this syntax, and that isn't really what I wanted to do. I really just wanted to do that, and then it kind of differentiated it and and made it look like it was actually we were accessing a variable. Uh, even if it was some mad table or some, you know, metadata somewhere or something. So uh, let's, I think we're going to have to reorganize the code to make that work. Because, um, well, again, there's there's more than one way to solve this. So if that's, if that's your way of solving this, then you're done here. If, if you're quite happy to access all your variables with this function style syntax, you can do that. So, yeah, you're done here. All you have to do is add the X thing, add one for Y and add one for anything else that turns up and uh, you're good to go. But I don't like that. Uh, I'd rather have it. So let's get rid of this comment because it's not relevant. I'd rather have it like this. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of this um, X that we mapped on. Um, I think what I need to do instead is um, instead of index being the, the sprite table, so we told the index meta method of our sprite meta, uh, meta table to just look in this table instead. Um, I probably need to turn that into a function. Um, so let's let's change that out for a function instead. So um, we want sprite index. So yeah, instead of going for the instead of going for the global table sprite and looking up your stuff in there, I'm going to go for a C function. Um, I've already got one up here that I'm going to reuse. Let's get we we didn't use sprite x anymore, so it's going to call this instead. Um, 
So what should be on the stack at this point? We should have, uh, because this is the index meta method, I think we're going to get the user datum and we're going to get the index that we are accessing. So um, what we should have, we can assert here. Um, uh, is is user data, I think. Yeah, is user data. So we should have, uh, I think at minus two, we're going to have our sprite, and at minus one, we should have a string, which is the index we're accessing. So that'll be our x in this case. That'll be, it'll just a string saying x. And that'll be the thing we need to um, get it from. So if that's all working, um, we should be able to go get the user datum from uh, minus two. And for now, let's just assume it's x that we want. Um, and we'll just keep that code as it was. So yeah, hopefully that just, so every time this gets called, that's just gonna, that's just gonna get x for us. So the problem we're gonna have, I mean, let's try running this. The problem we're gonna have is that it's not gonna call the other methods that we set up, like the drawer and the other things. So that's probably gonna be our problem. Yeah, attempt to call a number value method move <laughs> because I returned the value of X to move. So we may have fixed the other problem, although we can't tell yet, but we've probably broken all the other methods that we set up last time. So that is a bit of a problem. So um, what are the ways to solve that? Well, one of the things we could do is, well, let's fix up, um, yeah, let's fix up so that we, we just check that this thing in here, let's make sure that the index that we access, let's get the index. Uh, so it should be lure to string and minus one is the index and that's going to be a string. So in, in this case, it would be the X value. So uh, I could just check that that's X because I can do a string compare on that. So is the index X and they have to say equals zero. That's just the uh, C standard string library that I've included. It's just include string, I think. Um, and if that's the case, I will, well, I'll push, I'll push X onto the stack and I'll return one because I'm returning one value. And down here, if it's failed, I'll just return nothing for now. Um, and we could do the same thing for Y, for the Y value. So if it's Y, if this index is Y, we'll return the Y value, which we know is a number and we'll turn that on the stack. So we'll return the X and the Y and we'll, return nothing if it's anything else. Let's just see if that works. Um, so nothing's changed. We're still trying to access the move method, but hopefully we've got a bit further towards what we want. So now what we've got to do is in any other case, we've accessed the X and the Y. They're all our properties of our, of our object. In any other case, what we really need to do is get the values from that table that we used to have, but we've, we've lost that ability before because we, our, our index meta method isn't the table anymore, but we could still get access to that table and just pull the thing out of ourselves. So um, let's get the, uh, let's get the table, which is, uh, our table was called Sprite, wasn't it? And that's got all our methods like new and move and, and draw in it and stuff like that. So we're gonna get that, um, we are going to put that table um, onto the stack there. And then we should get the field that we need out of that or the index that we need out of that table. Uh, and the index that we, we need um, is, well, index, it's this thing. So if it's not an X and Y, it must be something else that we want to access from this table. So we've pushed on the table sprite, we've pushed on the index that we want to access in that table. Um, and now we want to get that value out of the table and leave it on the stack. So I'm going to do uh, I'm going to do raw get here. And again, remember raw get is going to get stuff out of the table, but it won't invoke any meta methods. And I'm doing that because I, I am inside a meta method here, so I don't want this to go crazy in a loop. I mean, it might not do, but uh, it's possible that it would. Uh, and it wants the table. So I've got minus one is the index, minus two is the table sprite. 
And if that's all worked, we're not checking really any errors here, but if that's working, then it will return the move or the draw function on, on the stack. So hopefully we're good there. Um, so let's give that a go. Oh, I've got unreachable code, which was, oh yeah, that isn't reachable anymore because we've, we've handled it in the else statement. So again, thanks compiler for warning me. Uh, let's see. So let's give this a go. And we're back. So we've we've successfully called our move and draw function again, and we've accessed that x value because we know we did that because we asserted. We we read the value of x, we read it into a temp value, and we asserted down here that it was just five. And we could um we could really check that here by just going was it six? Let's just mark that comment up. Could it was it six? So it should assert that it's that it's going to be so that it's five so it's it it seems to be correct it seems to be working let's just change our assert to six and there we go so so we're, we're back we we've, we've managed to recover our um well we've we've kept our the kind of syntax that we wanted which was we want to do sprite dot x to get the x value we've kept our normal syntax for these draw and move and we've kept new working um, and we just had to basically abandon idea, our idea of having a table as the index meta method and just kind of having a function again, but, but doing some stuff ourselves in here. So if we had any new values, X and Y and a Z, we'd have to put the Z in here as well and work out how to get it and then return it. So, I mean, hopefully that makes some sense. I mean, maybe that's, I hope that's not the most complicated thing in the world, but, but now we've got that, um, this this sprite that we're mapping to Lua, I mean, we've we've almost almost got all the functionality out of it. We've we've got our sprite that we can make. We can call our constructor. Our destructor gets called. We can call move and draw, and we can read the value of x and y. Um, so the only thing we're really missing is we want to directly write the values of x and y as well, which we'll probably do um, next time. But you can see here that we've, even though this has broken encapsulation, this this class, we're still we're still able to map it to something that looks like broken encapsulation in Lua, which is exactly what we wanted. Um, so, yeah, keep in mind that you know sometimes you might want to you or you might have some badly written code that someone else has provided you or a library that you've got to use, and you might have to make it usable in script. So. In this case, this poorly written class, which I wrote myself, uh, this poorly written class, um, we're managing to still map it and make it as poor in here as it was in C++. So it's really what we wanted, I think. So next time we'll look at um, writing values directly back to there. So we want to do sprite.x um, and then assign that a value. And then once we've got to that part, we've pretty much mapped our whole class and we really are doing quite well. It hasn't taken us very long. We've not done much code. And um, hopefully this is, at this point, if you've followed this far, binding to Lua is starting to become clearer as the kind of things you can do and can't do. And and it kind of shows that there's not one correct way of doing things. There's more than one correct way. And if, if this way doesn't work for you and with all the stuff you've learned, you could probably find a different way of binding this code. So you could probably find the way that works for you. So hope that's working out for you and uh, we'll try that uh, mapping of that Sprite X next time.